Welcome to the Homegrown Hunter TV. Today we're on a spring turkey hunt with Greg Martin, his wife Tina, and their local friend Jeremy Warren. Opening day is shaping up to be a good one. Hunter TV has been brought to you by Rack Stacker Brand Products, Canada's leading big game attractants company. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. And Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. And these other fine sponsors. We headed out for a pre-scout the night before so we can put some birds to bed. The weather wasn't cooperating as the forecast was calling for rain on opening day. The birds were still around, we just needed to find them and get on them. The middle's a jig. I can't tell, I haven't seen the uh, beard on the, yeah. I think they're all jigs, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, that front one's a long beard for sure. I haven't made it up that far. Those back three are all jigs, I think. I don't know, I see it now. See it now? Yeah. Between the corn stalks, eh? Yeah, the back two were jigs. We came up on a group of birds that were across the road from where we could hunt. Hmm. His beard's not as long, but I think he's got a heavier body. He looks bigger body than he say. sure does. Like he's got a nice set of hooks on here. We were gonna do our best to call them across the road in the morning as there were six toms and a jake in the group, hoping that they would split up in the morning and come our way. The weather was gonna be nasty and we weren't sure how they would react to our calls, but hey, you know what? If you don't try, you won't find out. Those three come across there, big birds. Yes, mm. they are. <clears throat> Greg and Jeremy sat 20 yards behind us calling in hopes that they would come across the front of us. As Tina was up to bat, it was her first turkey and she was gonna shoot first. During this morning's hunt, I knew that we were gonna get some rain, so I chose to pop up what's called the Platoon Ground Blind. It's made by Altan Safe Outdoors. What I really like about this one is that it's got a full window that you can drop down, as you can see in the video. Um, it's also got Velcro top, of course, before your hunt. You can fully adjust your windows if you, want, if you don't wanna shoot through the mesh. However, that is shoot through mesh. It's nice and big. It's almost seven feet in height, right in the center. It's perfect if you have somebody that may be disabled and can't get into the bush. It's a nice big blind. It holds three to four people very comfortably. It's also got a big six foot door on the side here that you open right up and the whole side comes open. 
So there's absolutely tons of room to get in there. And uh, it's also 360 degrees when you open up all the windows. So it's fantastic for this type of hunt and keeps us dry. Now I'm gonna show you something else that we use on the second day. What I've got here is a perfect backpack style running and gunning turkey hunting blind that you and any other hunter should be looking at. It's called the Quick Shot. Now go and check out altansafeoutdoors.com for more information on all the blinds that they offer. Greg and Jeremy decided to go see what the birds were up to. After a couple hours in the sit, they were not responding. We ended up packing up our gear and headed for the truck. On our way to the truck, six toms and a jake literally ran past us. Happened way too fast, it was really tough to get a shot. We chose to move on and do some running and gunning. We knew the birds were quiet so that we had to get on them. There was lots of sign as we entered the winter wheat field and we had to cut the distance between us and the toms that we had spotted from the road strutting. They had to have been at least five to 600 yards away. We took our time as we got closer to the birds. We decided to switch tactics. Greg actually decided to do the old ambush style. I believe they actually refer to it as reaping. This is where you use a tom decoy with a full strut and stock into range for the bird that you're after. That's when things got to be serious, and we started military style hand signals to determine what the plan was to go forward. We, we spotted multiple birds. Tina made her way over to Greg and they decided to stock in on these birds, but they just walked away out of view with no interest in us. We got back to scouting. There was lots of birds running around, but next to no goblin. It was hard to pinpoint where the locations were, but we spotted them all the time. No, the hens right there under the apple tree. Under the freaking beard on it. Eight inches or so. After lunch, we switched again. From going from the flat farmland in southwestern Ontario, we decided to hit the river bottoms, where we had thought that the birds might have been hanging up for the day. However, we did get skunked again. Lots of miles that were put on our feet that day, and there was no success for Tina to get the shot at her first bird. We're gonna get back at it tomorrow morning.
There was no lack of trying when it came to opening day of turkey season as we tried every tactic. The birds were there, we seen lots, but we think because of the damp weather they just weren't responsive. The next morning mother nature was in our favor. We were going to hit up a property that Jeremy had access to year round. We did some soft calls in the AM, we got the attention of a gobbler that was roosting not far from us and he was headed straight to us. To explain our setup, I was 35 yards from the decoys. Greg and Tina were together and to my right of the camera so that Tina could shoot as Jeremy was calling to their right. So we were using that as a tactic so that the bird would come a little closer to them. Jeremy kept calling softly just to keep the bird enticed. He made his way closer and closer to the target, straight at Tina and Greg, just waiting for the shot. This Tom played the part as we called him in well over 300 yards and he put on one heck of a show for us. I'm at the point now where I'm concerned because I would have thought Tina would have shot by now. There's been a couple of times his head is straight in view, ready for a shot. I can hear whispering coming from my right, so I knew something was up. This is the point where something went wrong. I thought Tina would have had the shot, but things had changed. I set the camera up so that I could quickly get a shot, but the tripod sunk in the mud as I pulled the trigger.
Here you go, boys. I wonder why you weren't shooting. Oh, we couldn't see him, Steve. She tried. I know. She tried. No, it was all the steel, and I was like, Steve, don't. Yeah. Steve's right there, don't, don't even do it. I'm gonna shoot a hell of a game or something, don't even do it. Hey, girl! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was tough. Woo! Oh. Hey, girl! I'm like, Start sleeping in more f***ing <laughs> <obvious. laughs> Watch your mouth. That's right. That's right. Sorry about that. Good fight, good fight, good fight, good fight. That was wild, he put on a wicked show, brother. I nailed it all. I nailed it all, brother. That's gonna make a wicked show. <laughs> it's just. That's epic footage, though. If you see what we were looking at, Steve, he came in the whole time. He was facing her. It was, he was full strut the whole time. This way, and kind of looped in and around those hands. He started cutting across, and she's like, I can't shoot him, I can't shoot him, I can't shoot him. He kept saying, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. And then she's like, Tell Steve to shoot him. <laughs> okay. Steve, kill him. You want me to kill him? Yep. You let him kick that pistol. There you go, brother. Nice. Good, Good job. job. <laughs> Woo! Okay. No, let's do it. Now, before the break, the team came together and we were able to harvest a nice tom. We got him tagged and back to the house to prepare for the table. Now, Greg has a tip that he'd like to share with you. How you prepare it for taxidermy work is you're gonna come back here behind the tail and there's a knuckle that is right at the base of the tail. It is right in here. If you reach in, you can feel that knuckle with your fingers. Start cutting right at the base of that knuckle. Right underneath that knuckle, make your first incision. Grab the feathers that you like to be on the front of your tail. Cut straight across along the front, gathering the feathers that you want to stay on the tail. And off that tail comes, and that's how we prepare our tails. One more thing again, that your beard is basically exactly like a feather. All you gotta do is grab the base, hold it, and give it a pull. Out it comes, no meat, no feathers. You don't even have to dry that out. For the afternoon, the guys wanted to go and check out their deer hunting properties and take a look at some options to improve their success. We went down into the river bottom where the deer like to cruise in the fall. This is where thermals can play a big role in deer travel. We found a thick travel corridor near some water to set up a perfect attractant to keep the deer coming. And now this week's Cut to the Chase segment brought to you by Rackstacker. It's an awesome spot to get in off the beaten path. We're probably 100 yards off of the field, right? The deer like being down there, it's nice and thick and it's secluded. This stump here is semi-rotten, but I, it almost looks like it's gonna fall over and then here's the other side of it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this to set up the trail camera. We'll face it kind of a northwest so that it doesn't trip anything from the sun. We're gonna move this stuff over underneath the apple tree and try and get some other brush in behind it. And what's gonna happen is as your deer are coming through here, you're gonna come in on a side angle to your, to your trail camera. Uh, and then you're right. able to judge them based on body size and structure and antler development. They come in, they'll be looking around, so they're looking straight at your camera. And that's how I took this up. So what we're gonna do, Tina had collected wood to pile behind the spot, so it forced deer to go in front of the camera. So you're 15 feet, it's good to get a full body shot of that deer. The only other thing is, you know, get rid of this sort of stuff. So this has got leaves on it, it's gonna do this all through the summer. You get rid of that and you don't have to worry about tripping the camera. The guys and I had cleared branches and brush out of the way of the trail camera to ensure that we get good clear pictures. Do 
just like that. Eh? Okay, let's try that one more time. We're ready. Push it down her. Yep. One, two, two, three. Oh, I just yanked out a handful of beer here. Oh! I'm in a free log. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's all right, it'll grow back. If it makes you feel any better, oh. I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> you want the logs to be punky, rotten, broken up so that the mineral soaks into the stump as soon as it rains. This property is about 200 acres and could use two to three locations to keep the deer centralized. During the summer months, you can monitor the deer in the area right through to the hard antler in the fall. How you want? It smells so good. It smells awesome. 10 pounds per location is recommended and bulk mineral is also available if you visit rackstacker.ca. Stacked mineral is a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal to hold those deer on your property until the fall season. Yeah, baby. In your experience, does that come in sideways, broadside they'll eat, or will they come right around? <coughs> That's the idea, they come in this way. Okay. You know, like I said, you yeah. might have an odd one that comes in like this. From the trail camera angle, you can clearly see the deer side shots, age those deer, and put them on the hit list. Good luck. Even after second day of turkey hunting, um, for some reason that conversation, it switched to deer. And uh, that's basically what I'm driven on. Turkey hunting's like fishing to me. It's something to do to wait for deer hunting season. Steve has given me easily five to 10 years when I thought I was uh, pretty much on par and I can't believe what I learned in a day and a half with Steve. What were you looking for? Some TP. Oh, toilet paper? Yeah. 